Hi guys and gals and kittens and welcome to the I'm Your Magic Show. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can take your Superbase database and wrap it inside of a Magic Cloud Labs for them to add the business uh, logic to your CRUD API endpoints using Hyper Lambda. Without coding, I need to emphasize. It's not going to be any edge functions here. There's not going to be any manually written Python, nothing. And uh, for this particular video, I am going to <laughs> send an email from one of my uh, post in locations. So uh, here I have a Superbase uh, project. It's a database. It's fairly simple. It's got two tables, accounts and contacts. Contacts has names and emails. And accounts has a uh, name, really. Um, that's about it. <laughs> So then I'm going to go to my Magic Cloudlet. Now, when I'm inside of here, I can go to Create. I can go to SQL Studio, and I can choose PostgreSQL. This is going to take some time the first time you do it because it's server-side cached. And what it actually does, it retrieves every single table and every single column, foreign key, and index in your database schema. So you now can see I've already got access to every single table from my Superbase database. And I can immediately go to SQL view and I can actually write, for instance, select all from, and as you can see, I have autocomplete. And as you can see, I have one uh, account and I have one contact. That one contact points to the one account I got. So now what's important is that when you add a connection string to your soup, Based database. You go to databases here and you basically click the external bugger here and then you add your connection string as uh, follows. You give it a name, super base, and then I have already pasted on my clipboard here connection string. And when you choose your database, this is where it typically says post, um, I think it says postgres. You need to exchange that with uh, these parentheses and put database inside of it. The reasons why is because this is dynamically substituted as you create a connection. And Magic actually needs access to the system tables of your database in order to be capable of doing stuff such as dynamically retrieving your tables, etc., etc. However, the way you do that in Superbase, and by the way, before you ask, yes, I will change my password on my Superbase uh, database before I upload this video. But you basically go here to database. Let me see if I can find it. Mm, not entirely sure. <laughs> Uh, database, I think it's like settings here. Mm. Let's Google it. Or DuckDuckGo it, I don't use uh, Google. So here it says, okay, connection pooler, pre direct connections. Okay, go to settings, click database. Go to settings, where settings, project settings, is project settings, database. Here you go. And then you will find a .NET version here. Very important. Copy this guy. I'm going to show the process. Paste it onto your clipboard like this. Add pooling equals false, for instance. And then change your password here. And then when you've done that, change the Postgres part here with database like this. And you've got a valid Magic Cloud database connection string that allows you to access the database. Then you can go to SQL Studio. When you've added your connection string, you can choose your PostgreSQL uh, database type. You choose your Superbase bugger here and then or whatever you named your connection string. And then you choose the Postgres uh, bugger inside of this, at which point you will see here that you have, um, let's see, contacts. I'm doing this literally on the fly. I haven't prepared this video at all. And accounts. And these were the two tables I created in my database here, accounts and contacts. So now I'm going to go to create and then I'm going to go to endpoint generator. 
Then I'm going to choose P uh, PostgreSQL. Then I'm going to choose my connection string and my Postgres database. And of course, this guy has like 27 tables because Superbase adds shitloads of additional mm -hmm. tables where they use to store stuff such as SSO logins and God knows what. So I'm just going to do accounts and contacts here. Right. And then I'm going to click uh, generate endpoints and I'm done. So now I basically have the equivalent of Postgres, right? I already now have endpoints. I can go to manage, I can go to endpoints, I can search for Postgres. And I can already retrieve my accounts here. This is kind of like the equivalent of Swagger. And let's find contacts. And there you can see. And I can also go into HyperID and uh, check out modules and check out um, my Postgres module. You can give it a different name if you want to. And I can invoke my HTTP GET endpoints directly from here, allowing me to parameterize them and stuff like that. And already at this point, you actually have something that Superbase cannot give you out of the box. And the reasons you have that is because by default, Magic will pull in um, left join for uh, parent relationship uh, database tables. So when I'm selecting all contacts, I also actually get the first text field from my account. You can configure which text field it gives you. If you go to create and you go to endpoint generator and you choose your super base bugger here you remove all tables and then you only do contacts which point you will see here account id blah 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 display as and whether or not you want it to generate left joints for you or not however i'm not going to and here you can see you can actually choose uh, the first text field that exists in the parent table you can change this from accounts.name to other text fields if you have that I only have one, so I can't change it for obvious reasons. Now let's expand Postgres and let's uh, send an email <laughs> when a new account is created. By the way, that's very, very funny because uh, it was kind of like being patronized here a year ago by the CEO of Superbase for my system's ability to send emails. Email. I'm using SendGrid, so I cannot actually uh, modify the from uh, address. Um, item was inserted into your account database table. I want to emphasize, I'm now sending an email and I didn't manually write a single line of code. Every single time this HTTP post endpoint is invoked, it will send an email. Microsoft. And uh, now it invoked my CRUD post create HTTP endpoint and it sent an email. So this allows me to exchange Postgres with Magic using it as an intermediary or a database API gateway, if you wish, for them to add my business logic using Hyper Lambda. Hyper Lambda, of course, is an actual love code and no code software development automation framework. So it actually allows me to do complex business logic without coding. Now, of course, it doesn't work all the time. I mean, if you need to do like really, really complex stuff, you might have to manually add code here by, but I mean, it's very easy to do. And if you don't know what some particular slot does, you can mark the code and click F1 at which point is going to invoke the <clears throat> AI-based uh, documentation features in Magic and actually explain the code for you. And the project is uh, extremely well documented. As you can see here, it accurately explains every single part of the code I selected in HyperID here. And I can even chat to it, right? What does the auth.ticket.verify slot do? have a chatbot inside of here that explains code for me 
as I see fit. And I can even, you know, function control space on a macro control space on Windows. I get autocomplete. And of course, here you can see documentation for every single component. And you click read more, you're inside of the documentation, allowing you to see all the features of this particular component and also browse and check out tutorials and hyperlam and workflows, how they work, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So and remember and please realize that what I did, I didn't write this code, right? I just clicked this guy and declaratively parameterized it, which resulted in having the machine creating my code. It is still code, 100% valid code, readable code. You can read it and understand what the code does. But this is what declaratively based meta programming, log code, software development, automation frameworks allows you to do. And if you actually remove the filtering parts here and you see in your toolbox, all of these are actions. Right here, for instance, if I want to insert into the log, okay, log type info, hello from Superbase, okay, save the file, option S on Mac or Alt S on Windows, invoke it, Yahoo! When the endpoint is done executing, I got a log item etc 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 so you see all of these actions you have down here let's do accounts.get they're basically low code and no code um, actions which when combined and chained together creates what i refer to as a hyper lambda workflow right and if you install some of the plugins from the plugin sections, most of these plugins will add additional actions for you. If I now, for instance, choose to install the, let's see if we can find something interesting I haven't already installed. Okay, Stripe. Now I go back to Hyper ID, choose my modules, I find my Postgres burger, I just choose any Hyper Lambda file, I filter on. Stripe, you will see all of a sudden I have a lot of Stripe related actions allowing me to actually create subscriptions and payments and etc. etc. And if you contact me personally, if you're a client of us and you need some particular blog code action for something and it is something that is reusable and that we can reuse for additional clients of us, then of course I'm going to create it. It typically takes me some two to five hours to release a new version of the entirety of the framework, at which point you will have your new actions within a couple of hours after you pin, which of course we only do for paying clients for the record. And then of course, if you click the help guy here, you click read more and you go here. This is like 200 lines of code explaining every possible moving parts of the system, containing bunch of tutorials, etc., etc. If you look at the workflows <clears throat> guy here for instance here you have several youtube videos helping you and guiding you along the software development journey and explaining things for you and this is a thing you cannot do with superbase and the reasons why is because they've based their log code parts on top of postgres which doesn't allow to modify the code that is being executed as your CRUD API endpoints are executed. So basically by taking out Postgres and just like removing it and using magic as an API gateway towards your database, you can still leverage the CRUD simplifications that Love Code provides to you in addition to that you can actually add business logic to your CRUD API endpoints. And that's pretty dope. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.